morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It is good. To, it is good to see you here this morning. We're gonna uh, go ahead and uh, start this morning with uh, uh, our song for this month, and it's uh, "Like a River Glorious." If you'd stand with me this morning. Like a river
BBS y Brasil. Dear Jesus, thank you for Vacation Bible School. Thank you for all. Den. Thank you for teaching us all the special things about your ways, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. I mean, I tell you what, she she just raised her hand up with BBS and she prayed, prayed a sweet prayer. It was wonderful. And I've got to tell you what, it's different when when you're up here on Sunday and all those people out there. All right, so but she did a good job. All right, so let's go ahead and read our scripture for the day. Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the Lord. All right, good job. Thank you, buddy. All right, so during our VBS, we had two challenges during the week. One was for our offering. Our VBS offering went toward Youth Haven. And uh, most of you are familiar with Youth Haven. If you're not familiar, right on our missions board out there is uh, some information you can get about Youth Haven. But they help kids from all different backgrounds, uh, especially homes, uh, broken homes, or maybe homes where mom and dad are there. But there's there's some tough issues that they're facing, and uh, God's used Youth Haven in a moment uh, to minister to kids, to give them a new uh, start in life, and, and introduce them to Christ. And so uh, we were able to collect $387 for you Haven through our BBS. Yeah. And then our other challenge, actually, Silas threw this challenge out. He, even before we started BBS, he said uh, something about how on his mind, 25. And we started the first night, I think we had 16 or 17. But by the end of BBS, Silas, man, you asked and you received. We had 25. Participated. We had several new kids, and we even had a, a set of parents that stayed one whole night, and another parent that came for a little while. So, praise God, we had 25 in attendance. For our VBS. All right, now we're going to give you a little taste of our VBS. We're going to sing two songs from our VBS. So go ahead and stand with me, and we're going to sing the first one is Watching Over You. These are some of our kids' favorites that we're doing today. Watching, watching over you. God is watching, watching over you. God is watching, watching over you. God is watching, watching over you. 
before BBS, stand firm. to do the decorations, uh, I can't remember what day it was, but I walked into the uh, sanctuary there, and that was before any of this stuff had even been put up. I walked into the sanctuary and they had converted it into a, uh, into a marketplace, and I, all I could say was, wow, wow, and wow. I mean, just, it, it was really, and then all of this and, and just everything. But personally, I got to play, uh, Ashpenaz, I, I got to play Ashpenaz, who was, uh, um, he was the, the one that, he was the, uh, the prince in, in charge of the eunuchs, uh, who was in charge of Daniel, she, uh, Daniel um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, and he was responsible for them and their health and everything, and my, and Daniel was played by uh, David uh, Prosper, and uh, we had a good time. The kids loved Ashpenaz. Uh, they loved me as a character. Until, until I put my hands on Daniel. And I was mud. <laughs> 
I was there. They would. They were mad. Even my own grandkids were mad at me. Uh, and and I scared one. Uh, come back into the classroom. Uh, but they were also concerned about Daniel. But you know, you know what that tells me is is that they were uh, they were listening to the stories. Uh, sometimes it didn't appear that they were, you know, because they were all moving around and playing and got their own minds on their own thing, but they were concerned about Daniel being thrown into prison, being thrown into the, uh, the lion's den. And, and I, told, I told one of the classes, and I'll, and I'll tell you this, I cannot believe how Ashpenaz uh, would not have been uh, converted to Christ. I can't, uh, you know, the things that uh, we saw in the, in the lessons, you know, uh, the first one where Daniel and his friends prayed and ate vegetables and were stronger, smarter, and quicker, and just better than all the rest. That was an answer to prayer. Uh, the, the time when, uh, when Daniel prayed uh, for uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they got thrown into the fiery furnace, that was an answer to prayers. Now, and, and Ashpenaz is front row to all of these things. Uh, the time that uh, Daniel prayed for uh, the um, uh, being able to know uh, what the, the dream was and the interpretation of the dream, you know? And the king was pretty smart because he didn't tell the, the dream because anybody could interpret it. You know, you tell me a dream, I can give you a story, right? <laughs> uh, but he didn't tell him the dream, so uh, he had to figure out the dream too, so God told the interpretation thereof, and I'll tell you what, uh, if, if you watch all these things, and then in the lion's den, close the mouths of the lions, that's never happened before, God is a God of doing things that's never happened before, you know, that's how we know he's God, anybody can build a church out of the materials that God created, or anybody can build things, things and try to uh, imitate things out of things that are already been made by God, let them make the things and then make the things. You know what I mean? Amen. So uh, the creator is the creator. And he uh, yes, couldn't believe. He has to believe. So he's going to be in heaven. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Uh, All right. Um, next one up, Josiah. Come on up and share your verse. He had Matthew 28, 20 that he's going to share with us today. I'm with you always, even to the end of the earth. All right. And then uh, I asked Miss D to come up, and she's going to share a word of testimony about the week. So come on up, Miss D. <clears throat> well, I don't have as much to say as John does, but. Um, <laughs> um, I wasn't able to get involved in the uh, preparations or anything because I work a lot. Um, but I got to say, the first day, so I invited my grandkids, and only Emmeline had come the first night. And she didn't want to at first. Um, she's like, I don't know if I want to go. And I said, you're going to have a lot of fun. So I said, you can stay with me if you want. As soon as she got here and saw Maris, you know, and Rosie, she was like, OK, uh, that's fine. She took off with them. She had so much fun the first night. And I know she's learning a lot. They don't really go to church. But um, I, I know her mom teaches her about the Bible and about God. <clears throat> but um, the second day, she wanted to come really bad, and then the third day. And I wasn't sure if they were going to be able to come the last day because they had something planned for Wednesday. But it ended up, because of the rain, they kind of got, their plans somewhat got canceled, so her and Ryan were able to come. So that was a big blessing to us as being grandparents. But I also wanted to say how, um, but I also, I mean, that's a good word, but um, thankful and blessed, I think, because there's so many um, adults here that just have gotten so involved in this this year. I mean, we weren't here last year, so I don't know what it was like, but um, I was just very thankful for how many adults that don't have kids or grandkids, they could be here, got so involved and just really um, made it, especially in the marketplace, made it so awesome. Um, I don't know, it would, I, every day I thought this was so awesome how people that don't have kids that attend here or even grandkids, 
just excited to be a part of it and put so much time and energy into the, the crafts and things that they they did and John and uh, David with their you know their skits and stuff that they did everything just it was great so I just wanted to say that and how thankful I am for that amen amen I'll have Owen come and he'll share his verse. He had Hebrews 13, 5. I will never leave thee or desire thee. All right. Then I had a couple of uh, written testimonies that were given to me, so I'm going to read one of those now. Uh, Miss Georgia Walters. Um, the Walters family's been coming for a while, and she said this, Courtney and I had a great time. It was awesome getting to know people we see every week but never really get a chance to talk to and getting to know the kiddos too. We are so glad you asked us and we were definitely blessed. They were in charge of our snacks for the week and did a great job with that and God used that. So, and at this time, Silas, come on up and share 1 Chronicles 16, 34. I'll give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. All right, good job. written testimony by one of our one of our folks who was involved in our VBS and whose kids came and says this I really feel called to send a thought a thank a thought to volunteer this week at VBS without you our children never would have experienced what they did this week you planted seeds you planted memories that will live on well beyond our years thank you for a great week at vacation Bible school to every single person who sacrificed their time, you are greatly appreciated, and you made a difference in each of their lives. Even if you don't see it, do. it made a difference. Each night, something was said that will stick with them forever. It's people like you who care, people like you that God calls to reach out to them. You make a difference. You are what plants the seeds in their young lives. As we grow old, I am thankful for all the people God sends to make a difference and help guide my children closer to God. Thank Liberty Baptist Church for coming together and making a difference in each of their lives. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. All right. All right. At this time, all the kids are going to come up. Come on up, kids. And we're going to have you kind of line up here on the tape. And if a couple of the BBS adults want to come up and help out, that'd be great, too. But well, you guys are going to line up right along this tape right here, in front of the tape. <clears throat> and I'm going to go down and lead you guys from down there. <clears throat> All right, they're going to sing uh, probably their, their favorite for most of them. This was their favorite song requested several times during the week. So. <clears throat> All right, as soon as we get everybody together. Everybody scooch in together. All right, here we go. Amazing grace, sorry.
Captivity and all week they would do things like visit the marketplace, back to Babylon, they do crafts and things there, eat snacks in the marketplace. They would go to the palace playgrounds where they would do different games that brought out some of the historical stuff and things that went on in Babylon. And uh, then here for celebrations and just sing praises to God and talk about the theme for the day. Uh, and then they had two different times throughout the day where they would meet with their leaders. And uh, so they were in groups of six or less. And they would meet with their tribe leaders. And the tribe leaders would read the scripture with them and ask questions about it. And then also help reinforce what they did when they went to Daniel's, uh, Daniel's adventures. Uh, and they would go there and see Daniel and Ashpenaz. And they would, and they would tell the, the story. So it was very cool. Everybody came together and did a great job. Uh, man, I, you guys blessed my heart, and I know you blessed the hearts of our families and our kids. So thank you so much. Short, brief message today. Turn over with me to Psalm 66. Psalm 66. As you turn it over there, uh, an old man went to the doctor complaining of a terrible pain in his leg. And then the doctor checked him out and he said, well, I'm afraid it's just old age. And the man said, well, that can't be. He was mad. That can't be. And the doctor said, well, what do you mean? How do you know? How do you know I don't know what I'm doing? And the man said, well, easy. You said it's because of old age. Uh, the pain's in one leg. There's no pain in the other leg, and it's the same age. <laughs> All right. So Psalm 66 is where we're at, and uh, we're going to be today. And the title of this message, Glorious Praise. So <clears throat> let me grab the notes real quick. And uh, Silas read the first part of, uh, of the passage. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 6. And so <clears throat> as you find your place there, let's, <clears throat> let's uh, read through it together. Psalm 66, verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name, Salem. Come and see the word of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There... Did we rejoice in him? Father, I pray you be with us today. I pray you bless the reading of your word. I pray you bless, Lord, as we look at your word and as we preach your word. Lord, I pray that Holy Spirit, you would have freedom to work in our hearts this morning to encourage us. And we thank you so much for what you did this week, Lord, through our VBS. And we, we thank you for the, the groundwork that was laid, the seeds that were planted, Lord. And we look forward to continued growth, Lord, as a church together, Lord, and as we we fulfill our primary calling, and that is to give glory unto you and unto your name, that all the people may see God, that we might invite those that do not know Christ to come and have a relationship with him and have eternity in heaven. I this in your precious name, amen. In, 19, uh, seven, in the 1970s, there was a book written uh, by Lincoln Kirsten. It was, it was, the title was Lay This Laurel. And then in the 1960s, another book was written uh, entitled One Gallant Rush by Peter Burchard. Both of these books uh, uh, went through the account, historical account of the 54 whose uh, attack at the Second Battle of Fort Wagner in South Carolina uh, has been legendary and is known because these, this was a, a volunteer regiment of uh, uh, black men from the north who came together to fight in the Civil War and to fight for freedom. Uh, in 1989, a film was made of this called Glory, produced from these two books as well as the letters from the uh, commander who was in, in charge of that regiment, 
uh, Robert Shaw. <clears throat> and so all this came together to do this film. And it was an exceptional volunteer service for a cause greater than themselves. That these guys are remembered, that this regiment is remembered. And as we think about that, they entitled that movie Glory. That comes to where we're at here in Psalms. The psalmist is talking about glorious praise. And as the people of God, we, we ought to have that unction and that sense that you and I are in a volunteer army. All right, several time, times in the New Testament, Paul describes the Christian life and the, and the service of a Christian as a battle. You're a soldier. And so in one sense, we are the army of God. And, and the fact that we are a volunteer, God doesn't force us to serve in that. As a believer, you, you chose to put your faith in Christ. And when you put your faith in Christ, God did call you to serve in his army. And so we all have that responsibility and that, that opportunity to serve a cause. You know, your relationship with Christ and your salvation is so much more than just ourselves. And our, it's what some people have been talking That boy, we, we can skip out on hell. Thank God for that. But it's way more than that, isn't it? Yes, praise God. We don't have to face God's punishment on those who die in their sin. We don't have to experience that. We get to heaven, but man, we serve in a cause that is so much greater than ourselves because we serve a God that is so much greater. Isn't that the truth today? Amen. We serve a God who is greater. Greater than all the, the enemies we may see in our world about us, but so much greater in character and in power than we can even imagine as men being. You know, the, the other night, I, I shared this, I believe, uh, in our in our BBS, but the, the other day when we had that big storm, man, there was a huge lightning strike that took place. It had to be right, right around here because I was in here and all of a sudden you heard, boom, it sounded like a bomb went up. And I thought, isn't that amazing? I mean, I looked out the window to see if there's a tree on fire or something across the road. Man, I tell you what, it made us jump. Maris was here with me, man, we both jumped. But all that power and that lightning strike is just a drop in the bucket compared to the power of God. Amen. And how powerful he is. As we look at this today, man, I've got two questions I want to ask and we're going to answer. What is glorious worship is the first question. What is glorious worship? Well, let's, let's define worship first, right? Worship, the noun is this. The feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity. That's worship. Can I, I want to I I inform you, I didn't know this really until I started studying this. The, the word worship in the English language did not come necessarily from a biblical idea. Now we read our Bible and we read our English Bible and we see the word worship in there. But you got to remember that's a translation of a Hebrew or a Greek word. The word worship was originally wasn't ascribed to God. It was a it was a a word that was used to refer to those who were in authority, like a judge or or a governor or a king or somebody like that. They would say, "Your worship." Now, to that that seems almost blasphemous to us this, to these days because we're used to the idea of worship is the God. And yes, the concept of worship is in Scripture and it's presented as to God. But the word worship when it brought into the English language and used, which just meant to recognize and give honor and respect to somebody who had a rank or authority over you. Now, it makes sense, doesn't it? The most rank and authority over us out of all, God. So we've taken that word and we use it to ascribe reverence and adoration to God himself. Now, the verb form of worship is this, to show reverence and adoration for a deity. Honor with religious rites. To honor it with religious rites. So that is the idea of the definition of worship. Now, what is glory? Look back at Psalm 66, verse, two, verse 1, or verse 2, the ending of that verse, because the psalmist, David, says this, make his praise, or his worship, praise is a part of worship, glorious. This whole description here, in, the, in this whole psalm, but particularly in these first six verses, is the idea but what is 
the psalmist mean with glorious worship? Well, here is how I define this or answer this question. What is glorious worship? Here's the definition. All right? To determine or purpose to abide boast in thanksgiving and adoration of God. To abundant or to determine or purpose to abundantly boast in thanksgiving and adoration of God. That is the idea of glorious praise. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, think about maybe a time when, when uh, I don't know, maybe you ordered something and you would have been looking forward to it. Man, you saved up money, you ordered it, and then man, you were waiting, you knew the day was coming. In our modern day, you know, last Amazon. You can order it on Amazon and have it delivered right to your door and you're waiting. Let's say it's something big. Maybe it's a maybe it's a, a job promotion that you've been preparing for, you had an interview for, and you're waiting. Answer's coming, right? And on that day when that big package arrives or when that job promotion is granted, you are excited, right? I mean, you're giddy, man, you're excited, you're like, yes, woo! And you celebrate it. Maybe you take the family out and do something. If it's a job promotion, maybe, man, you get that and the, and the family's like, yeah! Kids come in and say, yeah, dad! We had, a, we had an instance this past week. All right, I ordered something from Amazon. This is a Christmas present, so I ordered it early. <laughs> Lovely Amazon. But when it arrived, can I tell you the condition of that box? <laughs> it was practically just hanging on by a little bit of tape. And you could see exactly what it was. So my whole surprise for Christmas was ruined. But the kids, man, they saw it. Dad, is that? And, and all week I've been hearing questions about, Dad, is that? You know, when they're asking questions and they're excited. Why? Because it's glorious. Man, they're they're boasting, they're abundant, they're excited, there's energy. Can I tell you, that's what the psalmist is talking about here. He says, glory is praise, it's energetic. Man, it is, it, is, it, is an ex it is beyond just the expression of reverence, but it's abundantly boasting. Man, heaping praise on God, who is not only our creator, but he's our savior. And he's our very best friend. Man, look at the verse with me. It says, it says um, in verse 1, it says, Make a joyful noise unto God, all you lands. Now that word noise is interesting, right? So you don't have to be a great singer in order to worship God. I remind you of that this morning. Don't let the fact that you say, Pastor Sean, maybe I can't really carry it too. That's okay. God wants you to sing anyway. God wants you to make a noise. Man, if all you can do is just talk it. Because, man, you say, man, I, mean, I don't even try to say, well, that's fine. But express. Express your joy. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. And he says there, that uh, that word noise, the idea of to shout. To shout. It's like a war cry or a triumphant celebration of victory. So when you go before God and you worship him, God, the psalmist is telling us here that you ought to be shouting. You ought to be lifting up your voice loudly and praising God because, man, you are energized. You are, you are uh, just full to overflowing with thankfulness and adoration for God who's done so much for you and I, who's blessed you and your family so much, who, let's be real today, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't even be alive. Amen. We wouldn't have an existence. And so as we come to worship God, man, we ought to come with a, a joyful noise. So that's the definition of glorious worship. Let's look at the pattern of glorious worship that he gives us here. There's three things I want you to take note. Number one is this. All right. Uh, he says to make a joyful noise. Now that word joyful is the idea of I, I liken it to the best word I can think of in our modern day English language is exuberance. How many of you have ever heard that word exuberance? All right. Some of you haven't. But I just, I don't know, it's one of those, it's a fun word to say. I'm exuberant. <laughs> exuberance. It's the idea of that, man, you're just so full of of gladness, of, of, of energy, and of thankfulness that, man, it just, it just exudes, it just comes out. You, you can't stop it. That's the idea that we would be so, we're so thankful, we're so in adoration.
adoration to our God that we can't stop it. Can I remind you, Christians, sometimes? Let's do a check. How many times in our life are we so full of the goodness and thankfulness to God that we can't help? We can't stop it. I think oftentimes, to our detriment, to my detriment, we're not. We have a hard time giving praise continually to God. But the song, as believers, as God's people, man, we ought to be joyful. We ought to be exuberant. Man, just energetic cheerfulness to God, giving honor and praise to Him. Let me remind you, Christians. <clears throat> I don't know why you come. I, I, I hope I know why. But in my heart of hearts, I don't know each of your deepest, darkest, in your mind thoughts. I don't know why you come to worship service at Liberty on Sunday morning. Obviously, the purpose is that we're to worship God. We're to hear from His Word. We're to be obedient and respond to His, His Holy Spirit. But sometimes I think we approach worship at church we come and we just kind of get through the preliminary stuff we call it well I, yeah i'll sing my couple songs I'll, I'll do whatever yeah i'm just here to to hear a nice message but pastor sean if you can entertain me for 30 minutes 45 minutes an hour <laughs> in your message if you can give me god's word then i'll take that home Maybe it's just Sunday morning's my hour. It's my check off the list. Again, I don't know. But I know that in our world today, these can kind of become the... the we'll do it. Maybe it's just to check your law. Hey, I come on Sunday morning. I do my worship thing. I can check that off my list. Or maybe it's you come and you get to the preliminary. Oh, God's word is primacy. Can I tell you what? God's word is prime. And it is so important. But you say, oh, I, all the other stuff, that's, that's not really my thing. I just come to hear God's word. Well, that's good, but can I tell you what? Scripture doesn't allow us to relegate singing and the other parts of the service to just preliminary filler stuff. It's not. In fact, if you go through Scripture and you really pay attention and read, we are commanded so many times in Scripture to sing. To give praise unto God. And there's very few times when we're commanded to preach. Although I believe, hey, I'm a preacher. I believe preaching is, is, is important. But I also know that singing and worshiping God is important. And I don't see one as better or more important than the other. They come together. They ought to. And so, man, as we approach our worship service together, man, don't look at singing as just filler. Don't look here and, and uh, I, I'm, not, I'm just going to check out for the singing part and then come back in when the word of God is preached and, and that's my thing and I'm done. Don't do that. You're doing yourself a disservice but you're being disobedient to God. And you're not seeing because you're not seeing God as you ought to see him. Because if we see God as he, as he truly is, man we will come and our whole heart will be in every aspect of the service. So, I don't know where you're at in there. Man, maybe that's you. You say, Pastor Sean, I do. I, do, I can recognize God. But if there's a part there that, that you fit in maybe one of those other molds, man, will you just get along with God and, and thoughts and heart toward Him and allow Him to work in your life there? Man, number two pattern we see is to tell God how awesome He alone is. To tell God how awesome He alone is. Look at verse three. Say unto God, to tell the world? No. Not here. Did it say to go to each other? No. That's not what it says here. It says say unto who? God. God. Oh, let's read it better now. It says say unto who? God. That's right. Say unto God. How terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. You see, another pattern of glorious worship is that we talk to God and we tell him how awesome he is. Now, the word awesome has kind of been overused. And I, I, I confess, sometimes I misuse it. Because in the reality, this over the past uh, probably 10, 15 years, really, in my life, man, awesome really ought to be reserved for God alone. It's a cool word, man. We love it. It's a really strong word. 
But it's so strong, and it only describes really one individual. And that's God. He is awesome. Because he alone is powerful and mighty. And he alone is, can I tell you what? The psalmist used the word terrible. Awesome. Man, it talks about God's great power. The fact that it's immeasurable. God's great power is immeasurable. You can't measure it. You, like I said, you can take a lightning strike and, and, and they can measure that and they can make, they've made, uh, you know, hey, one lightning strike can power a city for so long. I can't remember what the time is, but it's a significant amount of time. That's how much power is in there, but you can't measure God's power like you can a lightning strike. Not possible. No, and that, it's, it's, it is just. God's power and greatness, his character, it is just. That means God does right every time, all the time. There's never an off day for God. No, he does right all the time, every time. Not only that, but his, he, he is, it is fearful. It is fearful. The reality is that we try to take some of the edge off that word by talking about respect, and it is the idea of respect, but the, the reality is God's power is so significant, so immeasurable, so awesome, that really when you get a full glimpse of God's power, you ought to be shaking in your knees, in your legs. Because of how powerful he is. But it is also keeps us from shaking in our knees as believers. Because we know, hey, God's powerful, but he's my father. He's my God. He's my, my redeemer, my savior. And it secures. Can I tell you what? The, the power of God, it secures us. Man, we can rest knowing that, man, I am, as a believer, with my faith in Christ, I rest in the power of God. Morning, noon, and night. Through whatever season of life, I rest in the security of God's power. Number three to this pattern is this, to sing his name, to sing his name. Look at, look at verse four. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name, Salem. To sing his name, the name of Jesus Christ. God has given, will, will give his glory to no other, but you know what? There's one, his son, Jesus. Hebrews talks about it in Hebrews chapter 1. Psalms talks about it. To his son, he ascribes his glory. And today, we worship the name Jesus Christ. Because of songs or choruses in the past, like his name is wonderful, or Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Or, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be his holy name. Or the song, I am, or behold our God. All these songs are praise to the name of God. Man, we ought to do that in our heart. And then the second question today, and we'll be, we'll be quicker on this one. What is the result of glorious worship? What is the result of glorious worship? Well, look at me at verse 5. He says, come and see the works of God. Here's number one, the result. If you come and you worship God with all your heart, man, with glorious praise, number one, we will invite others to see God at work. It will cause us to invite others to see God's work. How, how? In your daily life, in your daily life, or our daily lives, we invite others to be a participate in our life and see and show them God's work in our lives. <clears throat> but also in our corporate worship, we will invite people to church. We will share the gospel and tell them about, hey, come worship and hear about this God that I serve, that I believe in. And we'll share and we'll invite. But we will invite others. If we get a hold of God and we worship Him with all our heart, we cannot but help. Exuberant as we go from this place to tell others about God. I love what one person says that <clears throat> personal witness will follow passionate worship. Personal witness will follow passionate worship. And you can see it in this psalm. If you read the whole psalm and you take time, you can see it flows back and forth. You have worship, 
then you have an invitation, you have witness. You have worship, and then you have an invitation, you have witness. Number two, not only do we, want, number one, what is the result of glorious worship? We will invite others to see God at work, but number two, we will rejoice immediately at his works. Look at verse six. It talks about in, in, in the tri nation of Israel, when he turned the sea into dry land, and they went through. He says, what? At the end of that verse, there did we rejoice in him. You see, if, if we have glorious worship, God answers our prayers or we see God act in our life. At that very instance, when we see that, we will immediately give him praise for what he's done. We won't wait. We won't say, boy, I can't wait to get to church and then I'm going to praise and I'm going to get my church on and I'm going to get my praise on and I'm going to... No! Right when it happens... You can't help but let it flow and praise God and thank Him for what He's done for His deliverance, for His protection of your life, for His provision in your life. That is the result of glorious worship, that we will invite others to see and we will immediately praise Him when God works or when God answers. You see, the sincerity of my worship is confirmed by the sensation of my witness. I know we all have different personalities, and for some of us, it's a little bit more of a struggle to, to be vocal and to witness, but can I tell you what? It doesn't excuse us. We all need to witness. And I know that we struggle with different things, but can I tell you what? God and worship Him with all your energy, with all your heart, man, it will help you in the week, motivate you to say something, to invite someone, and to give praise to Him when He answers. God, I pray you hope. I'm asking the praise team to come, and we're going to sing a little invitation song. And uh, Lord, I pray that we as believers.